Hello Internet, welcome to Electromagnetic Field Theory tutorial series. In this tutorial, we are going to see what happens to Maxwell equations when they are subjected to different conditions. Now, the prerequisite to this tutorial is a deep and thorough understanding of all the Maxwell equations. You should, you should be conversant with all the Maxwell equations by heart and if you have any trouble with those equations I highly recommend and suggest you watch uh, previous videos where I explain the Maxwell equations, their derivations and their physical interpretation. Now the generalized form of Maxwell equations are written on the notebook and just to recapitulate a bit I like to mention what all vectors are mentioned here so divergence of electric flux density d is electric flux density is equivalent to volume charge density and divergence of magnetic flux density is zero curl of electric field intensity is negative of curly by curly T of magnetic flux density and curl of magnetic field intensity is equivalent to current density plus curly by curly T of electric flux density so these are the generalized equations Maxwell's generalized equations in differential form just to curtail the length of the video I'll only discuss the changes which are made to Maxwell's equations in differential form only. You could apply those changes in integral form as well. Now, if we were to use Maxwell's equations in free space what happens to them now we know the key points for free space are that free space is not a conductor of current or charge so you cannot have any charge in free space neither can current flow in free space so if you understand this key point you automatically deduce that there shall be no volume charge density and there shall be no current density in free space so Maxwell's equations they change their form and we get a new set of equations for free space which is something like this So you substitute J vector as 0 and volume charge density as 0. Now we come to case number 2. What happens to Maxwell's equations when they are subjected to good conductors? Now the key points for good conductors are
the first key point is that good conductors in good conductors charge resides on the surface uh, because of the skin effect so there shall be no charge within the volume of a good conductor although charge will be there but it will be there on the surface so uh, rho s will not be equivalent to zero however rho v will be equivalent to zero in case of good conductor so this is what is being used in the Maxwell's equations and secondly the uh, current density is going to be too large as compared to uh, curly d by curly t j is going to be very large in good conductors so we can say that j shall be very very large as compared to curly d by curly t so if you were to use and rewrite Maxwell's equations for good conductor they'll become divergence of t becomes zero divergence of b is zero anyway and this becomes or rather stays the same and this becomes just equivalent to j this is please understand this is just an approximation but this approximation is uh, extremely accurate in many cases so now we take up the case of Maxwell's equations in static fields so if we were to write the Maxwell's equations for static fields we need to understand what static fields are Stat there are only two time varying components featured in Maxwell's equation and those two time varying components are this and this they are featured in the third and fourth Maxwell equation respectively and if the fields are static there is no variation with respect to time so they become zero and that is what we substitute in static fields so the equations take up this form which is very very easy to understand and the next case is when we have uniformly varying fields again uh, the key points will look more or less similar and they will affect only these two parameters so these two are the time varying components in Maxwell's equations but they are varying uniformly so they can be substituted with a constant c and Maxwell's equations they take up the form of uniformly varying speed fields I'm sorry something like this and finally if the fields are varying sinusoidally if the fields are varying sinusoidally they'll also affect these two components
Now what we do is because the fields are varying sinusoidally, we we are going to introduce a component that should represent sinusoidal variation of the fields. So I'll not go into the detail of derivation. So you simply can substitute curly by curly t with j omega. So it becomes j omega b and it becomes j omega d and a more popular way of writing this is j omega epsilon e and this is more popularly written as j omega mu h because b, b is mu h and d is epsilon e so the Maxwell equations they take up this form minus j omega mu h and we could also substitute j as sigma e so that on the right hand side of the fourth equation we should have everything in in terms of e which is electric field intensity so these are the set set of Maxwell equation in different conditions. Uh, you could pause the video and note note it down in in a tabular form if you wish. We start off with the journal equations. We make changes in those journal equations depending upon what happens in that particular case. So we have free space, good conductors, static fields, uniformly varying fields, sinusoidally varying fields, and if if you know these set of equations you shall be able to use Maxwell's equation in numerical uh, in a more quicker way and uh, that's about it for this tutorial and if this tutorial was helpful please consider subscribing to this channel and hit the like button that will be a help and thank you so much for watching the video you have a good day and a good life bye